Hello, everyone. This is Ideas for Divas videocast. And today I have a friend here, Elizabeth Cunningham, and she's going to talk about starting a business and creating your own path. So, Liz, why don't you introduce yourself and say why you are a diva? Well, thank you so much, Renata, for having me. I am so flattered that you invited me on your podcast. It's such a cool idea, and I'm happy to contribute in any way that I can. Um, I love your definition of the word diva. I think it's creating a new definition of the word and a more positive spin on the word because everyone kind of, I've been called a diva my whole life and it hasn't always been in a positive way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm happy to spin it a little into this new meaning of the word diva. Um, so I, I'm Liz Cunningham and I was in corporate America for almost 10 years and um, Throughout my time there, I learned so much about myself and things I was good at, things I wasn't good at, areas that I um, definitely, you know, things that made me happy that didn't make me happy. Um, and I took that with me into uh, creating a new life for myself. Um, I think what makes me a, a diva is that, I mean, I took a huge risk. I was working for a great company. I was at Accenture for over four years. Um, and I decided that I was ready for a change. I was, a, I'm a mom of three. I have three kids at the time. They, I had three kids, let's see, five and under. And I, I mean, yeah, five, I had a five-year-old, a three and a half-year-old and a two-year-old at the time that I left Accenture. Um, and I was ready for something different. I mean, every day I was going to work and I was doing the thing and checking the boxes, but I never felt good about it. I never felt like I was passionate or um, creating any meaningful change for people. Um, and so I, after a lot of exploration, I decided to leave Accenture and start a business through a franchise. Um, so I, I joined a franchise called the Inside Coop and it's a local um, marketing company that supports small businesses. So we help promote small businesses on a micro level within their communities. Um, and I finally felt like I was going and giving back in a way uh, to my community and uh, creating change for small businesses in a way that they could see and feel on a daily basis. Um, so I, okay, so going back to what makes me a diva, I <laughs> I feel like I'm a diva because I go out there every single day and I have to just not care what people think. I mean, I go and talk to people. It's serious sales. So I'm going into small businesses every day and not knowing who they are. I mean, I'm door knocking, right? So I'm going into these That's businesses. Awesome and trying to just make friends and trying to set appointments with people and tell them what I'm doing and learning about what they're doing. And I can't care about what they think because I'm told no, like eight or nine times out of 10. Right. So that's I said, awesome. yeah, I have to go in and, and I keep going because that's life, right? That's it. Yeah. I get knocked down, especially more so now in um, our current environment, considering a lot of people are, really just trying to survive. So I have to explain to them why I can help them. And even after they tell me, no, I have to say, well, but let me, let me tell you why this is a good thing. And I have to try to turn that no into a yes. So, um, being a diva in this world, in, in the sales world is just going out there and you're kind of a glutton for punishment sometimes. And you just have to, even if they've told me no, like a couple of weeks ago, I'll go back and say, but I thought of a reason why this actually, another reason why this could work for you. So it's being relentless and just not giving up. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And I think that's the, the great definition. Um, so you were just mentioning how busy your life was when you decided to start a business. So you're working full-time, a global consulting company that's very demanding, and you also had three kids. So how did you really plan to move from like, um, let's say a stable job to start your business? It was a, uh, like, pro I would say, so I started the process of what we call like exploration um, in February. So I started looking 
I met with a franchise consultant um, and I kind of told him my strengths and what my goals were, what my um, revenue goals were and profit goals. And um, I didn't want to have a brick and mortar. So he gave me a bunch of different ideas and then we started paring it down. And that process probably took about three months. Um, Mm -hmm. And then, so that was around May was when I started really considering two different options. And then I met with one franchise and went out there, they're headquartered out of Scottsdale. Um, Mm -hmm. I went out to Scottsdale in June and then we signed all the paperwork in end of July. So it was probably about February to August. So, you know, several months of really planning and doing the financials and seeing what we could afford and um, narrowing it down that way. Um, So I I had a business plan. My franchise consultant was super helpful. And then I worked with a lender that was really helpful and a financial advisor as well. And they, they really helped me plan on, you know, because when in this business, it's not like you have a revenue stream necessarily right away. And then of course, my, my plan kind of blew up. So I had, um, all, all this revenue set aside of, uh, to help like give me some kind of income until I could be profitable. And then we, we came to realize that that's not going to work. So (laughs) I'm currently giving this interview in my parents' basement. We moved my whole family to St. Louis (laughs) <laughs> and luckily I have a spouse who has, he still is grinding every day. He works for Deloitte. So, um, he's doing the consulting thing still and holding down the fort until, um, my, my business really takes off. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was, I, I'm thankful that I have had him and my parents to support me The the entrepreneurial life isn't always as glamorous as mm-hmm. you might think. Like you have to make a lot of sacrifices. I'm sure people mm-hmm. talk about that all the time, you know, like entrepreneurial life is all about sacrifice. Um, so we've had to do that. And luckily I was able to launch the business in July um, during a uh, COVID and I've been able to help a lot of small businesses who really need exposure and um, slowly but surely I've been growing month over month I've been able to grow a little bit more and it's like slow steady growth which is all I could hope for right now so I would say when you're going through your business plan and you're thinking okay how much money do I need to set aside if you if you have the means like double that (laughs) right (laughs) you're going to probably need more than what you planned things always move typically move slower than what you anticipated. So um, if there's anything I could have done differently during that time, it's uh, plan for the worst. And then some, cause things do happen and there, mm-hmm. you know, things happen that you can't account for. So just be prepared to have like two steps forward, one step back, or sometimes even two steps forward, two steps back. Like it's, it's just how it goes. So um I, I'm glad that I have the support that I have, but I know that not everyone has that. So um, an- anticipate the worst, hope for the best. <laughs> Might sound a little negative, but. <laughs> yeah, so you, you mentioned some challenges and obviously this year is like most challenging than, than all the years before. Um, but like, what are some of the upsides that you see um, in your new life? I would say, I mean, I, there is a lot of flexibility, obviously, that comes with starting a business, but at the same time, um, that means that you're your own boss. And if you don't get the work done, then no one else is going to swing in and save you. Right. So, Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of that there's a lot of empowerment that comes with that. Like this all falls on me. Like I am the reason I succeed and I'm the reason that I could fail. So, Um, it's super empowering knowing that, I mean, I launched a business this year and no one, I I did join a franchise, but really when it came down to it, no one was really there to do it besides me. So I, I, I am like my greatest advocate at all times. Right. So, um, I, I think that's the most surprising thing that's happened this year. It's like, there's, it's been, uh, kind of a whirlwind like at times like I will we're a deadline driven business right so every month we print a magazine that goes out at the at the middle of the month every single month and so by the end of the month prior I have to be 
wrapped up and ready for that that print so i it's like nerve-wracking it's it's exciting um and i know that the next month is going to be a fresh start and something new so i would say just you got to keep moving one step one foot in front of the other cool and you mentioned some some advice you give to other people for example uh, have some scenarios like the bad options and really reinforcing those what would be other advice that you have for people who are thinking right now to start their own business to become entrepreneurs I would say have your people ready that you can go to for help. Um, have your team ready. Uh, I, entrepreneurial life, and I know this isn't just me, I've heard this from other business owners, not just within my franchise network, but other business owners, because all I do is talk to entrepreneurs every day. And they've told me that it can be lonely. And it's true, it can be lonely. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time in the planning phase and in the execu execution phase, you're very much on your own. So have your people ready that you can talk to that can, you know, lift you up or give you advice. Um, Cause you're going to need it. Like you, you, you do a lot on your own. You might hire a team, but when you're the boss, I mean, it's a lonely world at the top, right? So you got to be ready to have those people that you can go to for different questions or uh, support. Cool. So it's basically plan for the best, um, but expect the worst and also no, hope for the best, plan for the worst and yes. keep connected. <laughs> yeah. So these are the main, the main advice for, for people. Yeah. And I think um, some of the best advice I got because when you're on a roll and you're, you know, it, it, this year is different though. Some people's businesses have been thriving. Some have not. Some people have been really mm -hmm. having to hold their money close and, um, you know, not hire that person they'd hope to hire. Um, so I, what I do at the end of the month, every month is buy, I take to pen and paper to, I take pen to paper and I say, okay, what's the best that could happen this month? And what do I need to get, do to get there? Like mm -hmm. how many sales do I need to make? Um, how can I upsell to get there? You know, what, what steps do I need to take each day to get there? And then I'll write out what's the worst that could happen. Could, you know, maybe I'll some, this person who has been on the fence about wanting to cut their costs and cut me out, like maybe that happens, or maybe I, I don't get that deal that I had planned on. And so I, I know that at the end of the day, I'll probably fall somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. and then I'll have like a visual, um, kind of trajectory of how I'll get there. Yeah, that's great. So thank you very much uh, for sharing your experience and I wish you all the best uh, on your thank business. You. I think that you're already doing great and just being brave to uh, take this uh, opportunity, right? To, to really build your own um, path. I think that this is, this is amazing. So very glad to be able to talk to you and all the best. Well, thanks for having me. It's so good to catch up with you and you look great as always. And I hope you keep going. I'm excited to follow along with you and everyone that's on your journey with you. Yeah.